Bienvenidos todos a nuestro segundo episodio de Todo Eso y un Barra de Jabón. Yo soy el periodista con mi amigo Remy, Matt y Nasty. Aquí oh, cut, cut, cut. Remy, did you leave on the secondary audio programming again? Oh, man, yeah. Let's redo it. See ya. Welcome back, everybody, to the second episode of All That in a Bar of Soap. Uh, we appreciate all the love and support that we've got from uh, the first episode that we put out. And thank you for watching and thank you for just the love. So on today's episode, we have This Week in Cornhole. We have Fast Bag Minute, the Club Edition. And third, our third segment. This is a new one and this is a cool one. This is a big one. This is for um, anybody who's top of the league, bag reps. Um, it, it's, it fits this name. We're going to call it King C. So stay tuned to see who's on it this week. You may know the person. All right, guys, for the first topic is this week in Cornhole. We're going to talk about, uh, what happened this last weekend in the ACL Open 11. And to start off with the singles competition there, uh, we're going to pass it on to Matt. Matt, go ahead, bud. Sure. Singles open or single open winner, Devin Harbaugh. Um, second place came to Ryan Trader and third place, Alex Hicks. And uh, I'm going to shoot it over to Remy. Talk about doubles. Yeah, doubles. Uh, we got uh, Trey and Adam. These guys are hot, man. Their third win this season. Uh, it's two in a row for them. Uh, Titan guys, man. So uh, the the cool thing, though, is we all got to see our second place winners here, uh, Swag Bag guys, uh, Sebastian hey. Schaefer Ford, Seabass himself, along with uh, Cole Brewer, man. Second place, big shout out to Seabass. Um, yeah, we'll go, Seabass. Yeah, we got, we got some uh, good events coming up this weekend, too. So uh, what do we got, Nasty? Yeah, guys, uh, I just want to talk about a couple of events going on this weekend, St. Patty's Day weekend. Um, offsides out in McHenry, Woodstock area, having a bring your own partner uh, tournament on Saturday. I believe bag starts flying at 12. Um, again, it's a bring your own partner. Um, then, of course, we have the big uh, Great Lakes Conference number two out in uh, Wisconsin over the whole chunk casino. Um, big tournament going out there. They have your, your singles, your doubles. They even do a crew cup out there. So that would be a good one to go through. You guys looking for a place to go play some bags. Um, 815 Twin City Baggers are having a club meet and greet bring your own partner tournament also down in dixon illinois so those are the three tournaments that are pretty local um you gotta go out there throw some bags this weekend try winning some money have some fun that'll be it all right Los. Cool. yeah great nasty great um thanks guys you guys touched all the points of the uh, acl 11 all right all right next we're gonna do something fun uh we're doing something a little different with the fast bag minute we're calling it the club edition and this club edition is going to be called uh, or is going to be with the Duquesne Baggers. And I think you're going to have uh, some people that you're going to real, uh, recognize. I apologize. Check them out. Um, they're fun. Uh, and uh, get to know the Duquesne Baggers. Los back here with all that in a bar of soap and another fast bag minute with my guy. Mo Joe. Mo Joe. He's one of the guys that's locally known, sir. How long have you been playing? Ah, I've been playing, I'm an old guy, so I've been playing for a long time, tailgating-wise, you know, for mm. probably 15, 20 years. Great, great. And then competitively, what, how long have you been playing? <laughs> Three. Three. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, what club do you play out of? What uh, area? Uh, Duquesne Baggers. Do yeah, 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 yeah. Me and my, my, my guy, Jolly, we, we, we run the, and Gino, 
We run the Duquesne Bag. Yeah, we were there just last. Uh, actually, some of the guys were there last night. I've seen them uh, at O'Hare's, but yes, the Duquesne guys. I've played there before. All right, last question. Um, if you li what what's the bag you live off of? The slow side or the fast side? I'm a slow rider. All right. <laughs> Thank you for the interview, and guys, come back for more. Good times. Los here back with another fast bag minute with all that Navarro soap with my guy. Jolly. What's up? <laughs> Jolly, sir, how long have you been playing? Uh, about seven, eight years. Seven, eight years? Yeah. Um, how long have you been playing competitively? I would say five. Five? Yep. Okay, next question. What club do you play at? We play Duquesne Baggers, baby. Duquesne Baggers. Yes. But you are here today at O'Hare. Um, a lot of you guys are here, correct? Yes. Cool, cool. Uh, last question. Um, what, what side of the bag do you live off of, the slow or the fast? I live off the slow on a sniper, but when I got to collect three, I do the fast. I like it. All right, guys, thank you, and uh, done with another Fast Bag Minute. Peace. Los back here with another Fast Bag Minute with all that Navarro soap. Still at O'Hare uh, with their blind draws on Tuesday nights with a uh, local legend. Senor, what is your name? The Godfather. The Godfather. Okay, but what is your real name? Frank. Frank the Godfather. Great guy. How long have you been playing, Frank? About 10, 12 years. 10, 12 years. Godfather, how long have you been playing competitively? 10, 12 years. Oh, from the get go. Oh, okay. yeah. All right. Uh, what what club do you play out of? Uh, Duquesne Baggers. Duquesne Baggers. Great club. Uh, great club. Great club. I've, I've been uh, playing with them a lot for uh, the last year. Uh, last last question. Uh, do you live on the fast side of the bag or slow side? Slow side. Great. Awesome. Thank you for the interview, sir. And uh, come check them out here at O'Hare's or at Duquesne's. And uh, where do you guys play out of? What's the, what's the place? Uh, what is that? Uh, Bolero. Bolero's. Bolero. Uh, yeah. And we play at Jolly's house in Wheaton. It's cool. all good. Good. Come thank, join us. Yeah. Thank you guys and follow us for more. Los back here with another Fast Bag Minute here at O'Hare's uh, Blind Draw on Tuesdays with uh, one of the local players here. And your name, sir? Mark Zikowski. All right, Mark. Uh, how long have you been playing, sir? Uh, I've been playing about 22 years. That's, damn, that's a long time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, competitively, how long have you been playing? Competitively, maybe about 10. 10? Yeah. Okay. What group do you play out of? Uh, Duquesne Baggers. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. Awesome. And then what side of the bag do you live off of? Top, uh, fast side, or slow side? Slow side always. Slow yeah. side always. Cool. Thank you so much. Uh, come back for more of the content. Thank you. Follow us and uh, subscribe. Now on to our last segment. King seat. Matt, take it away. Yeah, honored to be the uh, the host of the first King seat. And I, I think a lot of people here uh, will recognize our guest. Seen him at the most recent open, had an amazing finish, an amazing an amazing ending to the to the weekend. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. Give us just a second. We'll be right there. Take it away. And welcome to the King Seat. This is our first episode of the King Seat. Uh, I'll take a moment to introduce and, and name some accolades of our first guest, the uh, five-time single open regional champion in Chicago and Soy City, Illinois, open bracket C champion um, in Triadelphia, West Virginia, and second in open doubles um, final bracket in West Virginia at open number 11, Sebastian Schaefer Ford, also known as Seabass. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. No, we appreciate you coming out. And uh, I mean, if people don't know who you are already, I mean, everybody loves the cowboy hat. I mean, if they don't know who you are already, let's kind of get started with the basics here. Um, where, where are you from? Where did you start playing? And, and how long have you been playing competitively? So I'm uh, born and raised in Woodridge, Illinois. Uh, just actually moved to Naperville recently. I have been in the competitive circuit, I would say, for roughly 10 years now. Overall playing, probably, oh my goodness, since 2008, give or take, when I was a little kid, just family barbecues, a couple of school competitions here and there. It was there like an after-school program, but other than that, I'd say competitively 10 years. Got it. Got a good, got a good amount of seasons under your belt there. Um, Absolutely. Do you have a favorite type of shot? Do you love your airmails, your rolls, or, or cuts, blocks? What's your favorite one? So I would say I became addicted to the airmail after I was initially told 10 years ago that I didn't have one. So I, I, it's one of those <laughs> things I became addicted to practicing. But 
I've recently uh, learned how to do the hole for hole game more because it's something that I definitely lacked. But I would say my favorite though is definitely the air mail. Definitely a uh, highlight reel type shot. That is very fun to watch. Yes. That's filthy. Um, when you when you were telling when you were saying that you didn't have an airmail shot, you were told uh, that kind of leads into the next one. Who were your your mentors and influencers that you know played a role in your game, and what roles did they play in your game? Well, there's about four or five of them, but uh, we'll start with uh, number one was. In the backyard, uh, my uncle, my uncle Bruce, uh, him and Jimmy, my cousin, were the two family members that everybody talked about beating. They were just good backyard players, and I wanted to beat them. And it was hours every single day from getting off the bus where my uncle would leave me the garage key to go in there, grab the three-foot boards with corn bags, and just practice, practice, practice. And eventually that day came when I beat Jimmy and my uncle Bruce. And then some odd years later, I go to a Romeo Fest and I meet the likes of Don Juan Bermudez, Mike Gabbia, Chris Novi, Gary, Jeff Schreiber. And Chris Novi, of all people, he goes, you know, you're easy money when you don't have an airmail. You're trying to push through everything. You slide everything. Once you're blocked, game's pretty much cut and dry for you. So him and Jeff told me, practice your airmail, get one. And needless to say, Chris became a huge impact in my game. I can't say I would be where I am today without his, just all his trainings, just staying late after blind draws. Hey, come to my house, let's practice for a little bit. Just playing smart and, uh, you know, my uncle would teach me various grips now. My uncle doesn't do anything ACL related. He's just strictly backyard, but we've practiced what we call like a sawtooth grip, just different hand gestures. And, you know, and then I got to give some credit to Jack Ogle just for trying to teach me a roll bag, even though my thing comes out looking earlier <laughs> than I have. Just definitely not my go to, but hey, when it works, it works. But, uh, you know, even, uh, and then mental. You know, mental game, I got to give that, I got to give that to everybody, you know. But if I had to pick th two or three, again, let's go back to Chris Novi for a minute. And I have to go to David Morris and Jay Rubin. Yeah, those three, I would say, when I was an up-and-coming advanced player, kind of building myself in the ranks, I would trash talk myself like there was no tomorrow. Those three saw some potential in me. And, you know, you could say, oh, I was just trying to be humble, not, you know, to toot my own horn as far as accolades go. But I would literally just bury myself as far as credibility. And they go, they would be like, dude, you're capable of beating anybody. Like, but it's just, I let stuff get in the way. And, you know, I think Jay's Mamba mentality, if you will, that he always talks about. And David just constantly reminding me, you can beat anybody. You just have to believe that. It, it took a long time to get to that point. It wasn't an overnight thing. And just constantly reminding me, hey, you got family and friends that want you to win. Like, you know your capabilities. Just go do it. So, No, for I'd sure. There's no one, no one role model in this whole thing. It was definitely uh, a pack, if you will. It's not, it's, it's uh, a lot of those names that I even recognize and I've played with. And or against, I and mean, I've heard some of the catchphrases that have caught on from a few of them, and I'm sure you'll know who this is from. It's play the game, not the name. Definitely, yeah, a, a big thing in it. Just at the end of the day, there's another human on the other end of the uh, of the box, and they can they can make mistakes just like you can. Uh, at the end of the day, anybody could win as long as you as long as you put your head down and do it. But that that's that's amazing, which kind of leads into the next question. Again, you were talking about where you started in the backyard on your three foot boards. I started on three foot boards myself. I still have them. Um, they're at my mom's house, and we break them out every once in a while. But for those um, who may not know, Sebastian is an elite player, um, sponsored by Swag Bags. And for those of us who play in the backyard, and and maybe you're trying to get out of the backyard or just started to, 
what are a few pieces of advice that you can give to somebody who's up and coming to maybe elevate their game or maybe something that you don't think about right away, but you kind of, if you start on it early, it'll, it'll, it'll help out in the long run. So things that I've learned along the way is your grit. You know, if you're just kind of flinging the bag because you're practicing an airmail, a roll bag, whatever, grip is everything, even for a basic slide shot. If it does not feel comfortable, your stance, determine whether you're going to step, stand still, because if you keep changing everything, like, I started out like that. I never stayed consistency. So it says, I read in a book somewhere, it takes 21 days to make a habit. Well, if you're constantly, oh, I'm going to start off with my left foot forward, kind of like a Jay Rubin style of guy. Then I turned around and I would put my right foot forward and go low in the hip like a Chris Novichet. Well, I'm never going to get an established basic shot if I don't practice the same form every single time. You're always going to be all over the place. So I would say start with that and commit to something that feels good, feels natural, and just take those days to make that happen. Otherwise, you're ruining your foundation and trying to basically build the building at the top and not from bottom up. That makes total sense. Uh, you got to start with a good balance, and, and every, it's got, everything's got to be consistent. If you practice consistency from the beginning, you should be all right. Um, yeah. And then – I know I mentioned swag bags in the initial question. Um, that is your sponsor. Yes. Um, it's something that a lot of us aim for, myself included, uh, to be sponsored by a bag company. How did that become? Um, and how is that going so far? So uh, before swag, so I'm going to go on a little minor tangent here. Before <laughs> we got into all these various bag brands out there, uh, there was one, I don't know if you guys are familiar with them, but back when Rudy Rutherford was still running Top Dog and whatnot, there was two common bags in the Illinois area of Bear Belly and yep. Venom. And it's not to confuse it, the Venom bag with like Titan Venom, like Venom was the actual brand name. It was a suede side and like a duck cloth, but it had like such a big seam. That was the bag that Chris Novi taught me to use and kind of just start on. And I just like the feel of like the fabric. So it goes back into that feeling of comfortability. And then all of a sudden we get into all these game changers, ultra mother shuckers in Michigan. So essentially we know there's hundreds of bad brands. Well, it wasn't up until Vince Passioni eventually introduced me to the Shazam bag. I would say about a year and a half ago, he goes here, try these out. Oh, I liked them. Like, the fabric in my hand was everything. I don't know if he washed them a certain way, but they just played smooth. And it was up until the Iowa Open where I was playing an advanced bracket, and there was still some great talent in that bracket where the Koopas brothers from Wisconsin messaged Chauncey, the owner of Sway, and said, hey, you might want to jump on this live feed, check this guy out. Like, he's been throwing your bag for a while. And after that is when Chauncey and I came together via Facebook, never met the guy, but heard nothing but great things about him. He offers me, you know, more of like an incentive sponsorship from the start of December up until, you know, the next six months, just to kind of help me out for a non-pro season. You know, I wasn't expecting anything big, not being a pro, but, you know, the fact that he was giving me an opportunity speaks fountains. So he said, hey, how can I help you as far as, like, what sets do you like? Is there anything that you've heard that you want to try out? You know, I told him I was addicted to the Shazam. I mean, I had so many advanced titles with it from uh, 2023 that he found out, hey, hey, it's pretty much all I've been throwing even before you agreed to, you know, jump in and graciously sponsor me. Next thing I know, I have... The chaos coming in the mail, the uh, delirium, this jersey with another T-shirt. But, you know, the guy's been nothing but first class. He even uh, gave my girlfriend a free jersey. So, you know, it just speaks volumes that, uh, you know, I want to represent a company that I like. You know, not just if there's money there, you know. If, whether you, everybody talks about, like, you know, big money with Lucky, Ultra, Titan, you know, because they're they blew up. They're, there's no doubt about it. They're big companies where, you know, many people not, not know about swag. Well, that's where I kind of have to come in. You know, people, as you mentioned earlier, 
if you don't know me by now, hopefully this is a dead giveaway, but hopefully I can help market his brand. And, you know, that's as a player, that's it's kind of like a give and take, you know, you're giving me a tool. Now I have to use the tool to promote the brand. So, no, for sure. Uh, no, for sure. And then I had uh, uh, one of the one bags you didn't mention, and I saw you using it this weekend was the Ruby with your partner, Cole Brewer national college champion and that was your doubles partner all weekend how did that yes. team become and what makes your team a team to be reckoned with so our team came by so i initially wasn't going to sign the elite contract i was just going to you know sign with the platinum run the gauntlet try to be a come a pro out in south carolina when they make us run the 800 plus person gauntlet or the great lakes last chance qualifier i made the mistake of not buying a membership last season and everybody's like man you gotta buy the elite membership and i'm like well nick and i nick mesco and i were partners well nick became a pro and i was like well i'm not going to sign this elite contract if i don't have an elite partner because you won't get the perks of being an elite you know, you finish Sorry. so far in the tournament, you get in, you qualify to these extra bonuses and whatnot. Well, Nick and I technically did that, but with Nick being a pro, I didn't get the benefit because I has to be too elite. Gotcha. So I was like, all right, you're going to make me spend $400 extra on this membership. Who can I mesh them with? So I'll admit my first candidate of reaching out was Alex Ball, you know, local guy, um, unfortunately just with the kids and you know just wasn't sure if he could commit so i was like man maybe it's not going to happen well nico morales recommends cole brewer they actually talked to both of us separately saying hey uh you both want it why don't you just go just go get it so cole and i were entertaining a conversation for about two weeks you know kind of like on the fence like is this something he can commit fully to with being in school is work going to be in the way of me? You know, all the typical personal stuff. And Cole's like, you know what? I mean, if you're in, like, let's, let's do it. He, we've played enough to know, like, I earned his respect in a match, even though he just mopped the floor with me. But, you know, I know he was a good shot. So finally, we both just, uh, I think it was like two days before Christmas or something like that. Two days after Christmas was the deadline of the elite contract. We both signed it. And say, hey, let's go get it. Um, and then we, yes, we did use the rubies. And the reason for that was Cole does have a very smooth throw, but I think my bags were getting a little dirty where they were kicking on him. So just if I was going to throw a slide side on mine anyway, I'd rather him play comfortable and just, you know, explore all the options that Swag has to offer. So we've, we've used the deliriums. We've had some decent success with those. But, you know, just for, you know, him playing comfortably, with his arsenal too was why we decided to go at the rubies. No, and uh, I was watching a few of the games over the past uh, that you made it to the broadcast courts for, and they seem to be working out just fine for both of you. Um, both of you were shooting really, really well, and it didn't matter which game it was. You can pick out any game out of the out of the handful you played, and they were all fantastic. Um, yeah, give you an opportunity. I know you have a lot of people uh, that 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 are with you that help you through everything. This is a great opportunity for you to give them a shout out. If you have anybody on the list that you'd like to do so for. Well, I mean, well, obviously I'm going to give a shout out to Chauncey. You know, he took a chance to, you know, even make this a reality. You know, people talk about potential sponsors and whatnot that never come through. Everything Chauncey said he was going to do, he did. And, you know, even prior to that, I got to give the shout out to the Kufis, the Kufises and uh, Ron Wilson because they also put in a good word. Those are some uh, swag bag ambassadors that uh, brought uh, me to Chauncey's attention. So without them, this doesn't happen. Just some Chai Town baggers, David, Jay, you know, the late great Chris. Matt, I got to give you a shout out. I got to give Josh Kirby shout outs. Without these tournament directors hosting, whether it's weekly, monthly tournaments, if you guys don't put the effort into finding these venues, this, these practice sessions, they don't happen. It, you know, staying late after a blind draw, like, hey, can I, do you mind if I set up over here? Oh, no, go ahead, practice for a couple hours because 
you know, not everybody is blessed like Ryan Windsor, where you have a place to practice inside your house and, you know, you can practice for two hours a day. So you have to go to a venue. So, but, you know, I just wanted to take the time to, you know, all these people that organize these events that allow us to play, because I know I'm, at the end of the day, I'm not researching venues or talking to people. Hey, can I bring in bags people and run for a few hours? You know, <laughs> it, you know, I can't imagine the amount of work or hauling around the equipment, you know, that, it, that kind of stuff doesn't go unnoticed and it doesn't go unappreciated. And I, at least not here. So, you know, to those tournament directors, thank you very much that we're able to play. No, for sure. And uh, I, I think I'll speak for all the directors that you, uh, you mentioned, uh, we appreciate it too. Everybody who comes out and supports doesn't matter what level of uh, play you are, and we appreciate everybody that comes out and having the opportunity to play with better, better players, watching players get better. It's all part of the process, and that's what keeps that's what keeps me going. I would hope it keeps the rest of them going too. Um, and then outside of you know showing up at regionals and or locals or even opens, um, where else can people find you if they want to follow you? Uh, so I'm typically just a Facebook user. I'm not a Twitter or Instagram or I mean, I just got set up on Instagram, but I'm not a tech savvy guy. Uh, so your best bet is kind of, you know, it doesn't even have to be a big tournament. You know, you log on to switch audio, you might see some random nickname and you know, you have to pick which one might be him. You know where to find me as far as that goes, but it, it, you know, if there's always an ACL event and it's like a bigger one, at least semi locally, Chances are I'll be at that. You know, I'm always willing to have a conversation with somebody. Uh, it took me a long time to realize uh, what being at the, I mean, I'm not even going to say I'm at the top, but reaching that top tier, if you will, I mean, I know I'm like this close from it. Other people will argue, you know, you're already there. No. Not yet. I haven't reached, I haven't got that status yet. But it took <laughs> me a while to, it took me a while to accept that. Uh, just i would put so much pressure on myself as a player so it, like these blind draws you hear about people quitting on partners and whatnot and i know at one point i was labeled as that guy and you know i've made amends with some of those people and you know i've apologized if i came across that way it's just i at that time it wasn't me really giving up on them it was me putting so much extra pressure silly pressure on my, ourselves for a blind draw and, yeah. you know, it's one of those things, coming of age, you learn, like, let me not do that anymore. Like, practice your stuff. It was, you know, if some, you see somebody working on an airmail and they're missing three out of four, you think that they're giving up on it. And, you know, you learn from that. And, you know, I, it's actually, I've become closer with some of those people now just because, you know, it, it's, it's, we understand each other. No, so, for sure. As far as, like, as far as where to find me, hey, I got the basic Facebook page. You're not going to see a Sebastian Schaefer Ford ACL Pro. Like, no, not any of that. It's going to be my basic page. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, yeah, in person at tournaments and whatnot, you know, I'm I'm never too busy to say hi. And that, that goes right into this one. Well, thank you for coming to the show. I appreciate your time um, and insight and, and knowledge and uh, give – us and everybody else an opportunity to know a little bit more about Sebastian Schaefer Ford, the boot spur assassin, also known as Seabass. I still love that nickname. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. And back to the 10, back to you guys. All right, guys. I'm back at it with uh, all that and a bar of soap, and I'm here with one of the airmail kings. Fun guy. Um, he shoots threes like his name is Steve Curry. Right, he right. delivers like his name is Carl Malone. Anyway, sir, what is your name? My name's Herb Jensen. Awesome. How long have you been playing, sir? Uh, probably 20 some years now. Great. Uh, what league or what group do you play out of? Uh, I play with Duquesne Baggers. I play in Woodstock with the McHenry County Baggers. Occasionally, I even get up to Lake County with those guys. That is awesome. He's one of the local guys that a lot of people know because of his air mail. great shooter. All right, what is your favorite bag? Last question. I would say a Fuller bag. Uh, Costello X is probably the one I really like. Um, yeah, I'd say Costello X. 
Awesome. Thank you, sir. And uh, come back and keep watching uh, for more content. Hey, guys. It's Nasty here with another Fastback Minute with... Lupo. What's going on, Lupo? What's good, brother? What's up, man? Hey, where you play out of? Any any clubs you want to give uh, a shout-out to? I play with Duquesne Baggers, and we play a lot with uh, McHenry County Baggers. Nice, nice, and, nice. Uh, uh, Upstate 8. There you go. Where we're at right hey, now. Hell yeah, Upstate 8. There you go. What kind of bags we throwing tonight? Uh, Buffalo Deadhead. Hey, me, Lupo partners tonight. Oh, yeah. Hey, brother, we winning or what? Yeah, yeah, always. Nice. Hey, that's a fast bag minute with Nasty. And Lupo. Thanks, y'all. Los Bag with another fast bag minute here at O'Hare's Pub uh, for their Tuesday night blind draw with my guy. He. Tell me all your nicknames. Oh, I got too many to mention. Yeah. Oh, today I'm Curtis. <laughs> uh, Keith Curtis, how long have you been playing, sir? Oh, about six years. Six years? How, how about competitively? How long? Uh, three, four. Three, four? Okay. What is uh, your favorite bag? Most of uh, BP. BP? BP. Okay. BP, but, uh, Any uh, specific? Yeah, the slides. Uh, what the heck is those? Sabotage. Don't... Okay. Okay. Uh, nice bag. Um, last question is, you live on the fast side or the slow side of the bag? Slow. Cool. All right, guys. Stay tuned for more. And now to end the episode with Free Talk. Sub gentlemen, what's what's that, up, man? Uh, Carlos, what, what, what shirt you got on there? I could read Boss from here. Oh, check it out. It's not Hugo Boss. So here, check it out. <laughs> nah. Here we go, Boss of the top. Of the top. Of the top. Of the top. Nice. If you want a guy that shoots a seven? Right here, baby. <laughs> and a good night. <laughs> right. Yeah. I man early. That's not, let's let's just say early because. <laughs> No, that's early. Early is a good point. Bottles and cans, I guess. Nice. I got a sh shout out to the mother-in-law. There you go. Good job. Good job. Look at that. All right, man. Subscribe. Like, subscribe. The Remy Dent, the Remy Hayworth. There you go. Oh, yeah, I'll post the email to get in touch with us if you guys want to be in the Club Edition Fast Bag Minute. There we go. Man, we would love anybody to come hang with us, man. It's, it's just a fun time and uh, just to uh, talk about it. Okay, don't push us in. Don't mind us. Pull us aside. We're, we're there. All right. Yep. Cool. All right, guys. Peace.